In this video, I will show you how you can efficiently take designs from a large range of popular design software and bring them into Unreal Engine. This workflow allows for rapid design iterations and model updates from external modeling software typically used, such as Rhino and Revit. This is done using an app called Speckle, which allows to avoid the inefficient import and export process through its online database. This is an alternative workflow in contrast to the direct file imports using plugins such as DataSearch. And it works very well on live projects which needs many changes and working with various software. Speckle is a software platform that stores your BIM data and models directly inside the online database. It uses these custom Speckle connectors to allow the sending and receiving of 3D data between a large amount of popular software which you can see here. To install these connectors, you can download the Speckle Manager from up here. Once you have it installed, you can open the desktop app and you see it exactly the same list here. So you can click and install whichever connector you need. Here for example, I will select Rhino, Revit and Grasshopper. Now I also search up here to find the SketchUp connector. If you scroll to the bottom, you can find even more software. Some of these require a specific way to install the connector, such as here for Unreal, which I'll go through later in the video. You will also need to make a free Speckle account. And when you log in, you will be presented with a UI like this. You can see the button here for Stream Creation. Streamers, in a way, are like making new projects. So you can create a new stream and name it however you like. I will call it Office Tower. And here you can also invite other members of the team with Speckle accounts too. I'll skip that and click Create. In the menu on the left, you can see options for creating branches. If you have used version control software, such as GitHub, you might recognize these already. In essence, you can save versions of options of your design here that branch off from the main design. All these features you can also access directly within your 3D software if you have installed the connector. So I will show you how to do this in Rhino. I have a Rhino file here with three towers that I made as examples to load into Unreal, starting with option one. When the Rhino connector is installed and loads up, you will find the Speckle tab here. There are two main buttons. The second Speckle Mapper button here allows you to convert Rhino geometry into native elements in Revit, ArchiCAD and Tecla, although the last two are still in development. For example, you can map what Rhino geometries are flaws and send it to Revit to become Revit native floor elements, which is very useful. We won't be needing that for this workflow, so instead you can just select the first Speckle button here which will open up the main project manager. You need to log into your Speckle account on the top right. And you also need to refresh the UI, so you can click on the buttons like so. You will then see the same stream as we created on the web UI. If you select this, you can see that we can add branches or options from here too. You can select geometry by just selecting certain layers, mouse selection, or simply selecting everything that is visible in the viewport. If I move this over, you can see the option one tower. So I will send everything you can see here by just clicking the button on the mail. And after a few moments, you will receive confirmation that it is sent. If you go back to the web interface and select the main branch, you will indeed see that 110 elements was sent from Rhino. What is great about this is that you can select and get a preview of the geometry, spin it around, click various layers, and you can also get the geometry details of it. In option uploaded, I will show you how to connect this to Unreal. To install the Unreal Speckle connector, you will need to load the Epic Games launcher, go to the marketplace and search for it there. In these screenshots, you can also see how blueprints can be used to customize the imports of these connectors in more detail. 
But for now, we can just select the plugin and install it to the engine that you are using. If you have an Unreal project already loaded, you can open it up, or you can just make a blank project from the architecture templates. When this compiles, we need to go to Edit, Plugins, and search for Speckle. You can check this option to enable the plugin, and you need to restart Unreal Engine. To access the Speckle Manager, it is hidden as an actor. So to find this, you need to go to the Actors tab by pressing this green cross here and select Place Actors. In the tab, you can then search for Speckle and drag and drop this actor into the scene. I will reset the transform by clicking this arrow here so that it centers to the level. And if you scroll down, you see here that we need an authentication token to activate it. Go back to the web UI, down to profile in the menu, and scroll down to access the tokens. Select new token, name it whatever you like, and for the scopes, check them all if you want all the permissions. Click save, and you'll need to copy this token. It makes a note saying that you will only see this once, so if you don't copy it now, you just have to make another one. Then back in Unreal, just paste that code into the authentication token section in the Speckle Manager. To get to refresh, you might need to check and uncheck this box, and you will see that our Office Tower stream has been accessed. We only have one branch at the moment, so you can keep it at that, and you can see that the last 110 elements that we sent from Rhino are here. All you need to do is then select the Receive button. Just to wait for it to process, this could take a minute or two depending on the complexity of the geometry, and you see that exact same tower is loaded on the origin spot of the Speckle Manager. If we zoom out, you can see all the materials and various layers are loaded in. These are attached to the Speckle Manager actor, so if you move that actor, the entire model moves with it as well. So it is very easy to relocate. If you go to the folder, you can also see that you can select any of the individual elements as well. So you can toggle these for visibility, delete them, or move them if you like. Now that we have loaded the main option, I will show you how to change this out with other options as part of the workflow. Back in Rhino, we can turn off the option one in the layer and activate the second layer. Go over to the Speckle Manager and under Model Selection, add a new branch. I will just name this to Blue Tower and press Create. I will keep the selection mode as everything, and we can just send everything in the viewport. So I will just hit Send. Once the confirmation appears that the data is sent, I can go and do the same and turn off the option two in the layers and turn on the third one. Then I'll go over to the spec manager and add a new branch. This time I'll name it yellow tower. Then I'll hit send as well. With that, we now have three different models uploaded to the speckle database. If I go over to the web interface, to confirm this, you can see that indeed in our feed, we have all the updates and lists of the latest actions. From all the branches we created to the elements that were uploaded. This is extremely useful when working in teams over multiple iterations to keep track of what's happening. So it's just like a GitHub for 3D. Click on streams, select the office tower stream, and you'll be able to see all the branches we have made. It may take some time for the thumbnail to update with the 3D image. Or if you click one of the branches, you can see the preview of the option with all the layers once again. And in the same way, you can do this with any of the branches and geometry that is created. 
so you can feel free to update the branches by overwriting them or make new ones. So now it is time to change your options back in Unreal with the new branches we made. Go over to the Details tab with the Speckle Manager selected and we can delete the previous import by clicking the Delete Objects button. I found that this sometimes doesn't work, so you might have to select all the objects manually in the Outliner and delete them. You can then go to the branch here and you see the new ones made. I will select the blue tower and click Receive. Wait a minute or so and you can see the blue option load in. In the same way, we can press Delete Objects to remove this and go over to the branch and switch the yellow tower and press Receive. So you can see how it's very easy to just load in various options and delete and change as you like. You can manipulate their location by just moving around the actor here. We also see that the typical lighting system affects all the geometries that we brought in, along with the materials if we adjust the time of day in the default sun sky system here. What is also useful to know is that if you go to the content drawer and navigate to the speckle folder and down to materials, you will find all the materials that are created with our imports. You can double click on any of these and change the colors, reflections and other properties. And then if you re-import the option with the same material name, it will keep these changes. A similar speckle procedure of sending and receiving files applies for other software, such as SketchUp or Revit, which I have opened here. After you've installed the connector to the appropriate software and logged into your account, you can access the exact same stream and database. So this is a major advantage over using Datasmith for your imports. And finally, to finish off, I'd like to show you how the same process can be combined with more complex scenes, such as ones with streamed Google tiles, to try out various options rapidly within a photorealistic context. I've simply used the same authentication token and speckle account to access the database with the towers. I could then go through deleting and receiving whichever branches I like, and then they can be used for visual studies, apps, or presentations. This was just a quick overview of Speckle in use with Unreal Engine. You can go into more advanced controls of imports using Blueprints. And Speckle also has much more functionality, including building custom apps and working with all kinds of software. I can go through some of these in new videos if people are interested, so let me know in the comments. Otherwise, hope you found this tutorial on software interoperability useful. I'll see you in the next video.